Hello, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Mark's Madness. He's Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. We've got a full slate of league games to get into and, and delve into. This is our final show of 2015, so let's make it a good one. And let's begin in the Northwest Conference. A huge win for Lincoln View by one point over Spencerville on Friday night. Yeah, really big win for them to go. Uh, you know, to, to get a win at home, I, I think the 50-49 uh, win was very big for them in the conference play. But I think, Matt, what we're going to find is in this conference, every week is going to be a big game because there are so many teams in this conference that are very good this year. Lincoln View then goes back on Saturday night, uh, coming off the big win, beats Wayne Trace by 12. Do you think that win over Spencerville was their biggest since the state title? That's what some were yeah, saying. Yeah, some have called it that. It certainly was a huge win for them to, to get that particular victory and, and get an early season win, to be fair to Spencerville. Zach Goldke has been injured. He played some, but it's certainly not at his effectiveness level yet. I think Klein is still out as well. So a little bit of a depleted Bearcat team, but certainly a big win. If you look at what's going on over there, they've got four players averaging a double figure through the Lincoln View Lancers. They've had nine different players make a three-point field goal this year, so they can score from the outside as well. They've got a nice basketball team by Brett Hammonds. A lot of different options for them, and we'll see how that game plays out for the league title. I mean, pretty early on, but we think these are two of the better teams in a very top-heavy conference. Yeah, well, it is. If you look at what the conference has done, they're 25-9 and nine in non-conference games, and Bluffton's a game under 500. Eight is a game under 500 in non-conference opponents. Everybody else has a winning record against non-conference opponents. It would look like, as the season goes along, it's going to be big game week, week after week in that conference. Spencerville also rebounded on Saturday with a win over Ottoville. There was another very good game in the conference between Crestview and Grove, and a milestone in that game for senior Connor Lotson. Connor Lotson goes over 1,000 points in, what, in a big game, a close game that goes overtime, double overtime, as a matter of fact. That's really big for him as well. Let's take a look at a couple of the plays late in that one. And you do your thing, you break it down, show us yeah. how Crestview you got the league victory. Well, let's look at it first of all, because you can see right now, this, it's a three-point game, there's 10 seconds left, uh, Columbus Grove is down, they got the ball out in front of their own basket, or at their own basket in, and let's watch the play first of all, it's a very well-designed play, and we're going to get a shot by Gabe Steck, a three ball to, to tie the game up at this point. As we go through the replay of it, first of all, this pass going cross-court to this corner, that's a dangerous pass, but also if you look at Steck Soldi has made a break this way, and he's a threat to take the basketball and score here, so he has to be well defended. But instead, here comes the screen right here. Steck Soldi is going to go this way and get a look. His defender is still expecting him to be in the left corner. He gets a good look at it, and still you got to bake it. He's out there at 22 feet. That's a big shot for them, and, and that ties the game up, puts it into the first overtime. We're in the second overtime now. Early on, Lotzenheiser had his 1,000 points earlier, splits the defense and goes and scores. Once again, he gets the ball in the corner right here. And the key to this is he's going to come and split the trap and go right through here to the goal. You can see the officials going, get up. It's not a charge. No contact inside as he avoids that. And that puts him up two. And then they get the ball back. And this time it's set offense. And this time he's going to get the ball coming across the screen into the baseline area and scores right here. And again, if you look at it on replay, his defender right here has to be out on him. You've got to guard him out here because he's been able to score the basketball so much. So when he gets this screen and comes off, here's the screen. Not a lot of help. He fumbles the pass a little bit, which puts him below the goal, but he's able to jump back and score. And that puts Crestview in the driver's seat. They go on to win the basketball game. Very good game, double overtime. We had a handful of games go multiple overtimes yeah. during the weekend. We had a four overtime game again right. for Continental, which they lost, and a three overtime game between Lipsick and Miller City, which Miller City ended up winning. But great basketball action all around. Just to finish out the Northwest Conference, it was Paulding over Ada on Friday night, 49-42, Bluffton over Adelphus Jefferson, and Jefferson bounced back with a win on Saturday. Meanwhile, Ada Saturday, they lost to Perry. So very yeah. competitive top to bottom, right? Huge, huge game this week. Paulding and Spencerville are going to match up this week. Uh, and that, that's a big game. Spencerville you know, doesn't want to go down two games. Paulding's playing very well. Got a win on Monday night uh, against uh, Miller City. So they're on a roll at Paulding right now. And good things going on there. Let's go to the Western Buckeye League now. We had three really close games. OG <laughs> over Bath by three. And Bath also lost to Finley in double overtime on Saturday. So a rough weekend for the Wildcats. Other close games, St. Mary's on top of Van Wert by two. High scoring affair, 83-81 right. final there. 
And then Elida defeats Salina 41-39. That's the first win for the Orange Bulldogs. I think you called that game, I right? I did, I yeah. did. It was a game that both teams struggled to put points on the board, but eventually Elida got a dribble basket by a press right close to the buzzer. Salina couldn't get a good shot after that, and Elida wins by two. That was their first win. What did you see out of St. Mary's and OG in their league victories? Well, I, first of all, I think if you want to go to OG, and, and I think in some ways you could say that they are fortunate because the Wildcats missed some free throws late and then didn't rebound a free throw that gave OG a chance to win. But doesn't it seem like that's what happens with the Titans? They always seem to play well in close ball games and find ways to win, which they did. They struggled with Lima Central Catholic on Saturday night, got beat by 20 in T-Birds home, but uh, certainly a good win for them. And St. Mary's, boy, can they score the basketball. I mean, Derek Jay has been on fire. He's got 19 average, per game average. We expected that out of him. They really can score and, and a big win, uh, and a big shootout win over Van Wert. And Matt, if we're looking at games this weekend, you're going to have a Shawnee play St. Mary's this weekend. That is going to be another shootout. Jaden O'Neill's having a huge year for them. He's had 27 or more in every game for the wow. Indians except one where LCC shut him down. So he's been a scoring threat. This will be a shootout type game between St. Mary's and Shawnee this week. And I just want to go back to that OG Saturday game yep. for a moment because it was a much hyped game between LCC and OG. And the T-Birds just seem like a step above the rest of the area right now, in my opinion. Well, there's two factors in that. And certainly one of them is the T-Birds are very, very good. And they've got tremendous balance scoring with, with Walton and Cobbs and Dixon and Taffler can score, O'Connor can score. So they've got tremendous balance in what they've done scoring-wise. And they're very, very good. But they also didn't play on Friday right. night, which gives them a little bit of an advantage from a term of freshness and legs and preparation and so on. Uh, that's not to be excused for OG, but certainly it does help with TBS in their winning streak. Closing out our recap of the Western Buckeye League, Defiance is 4-1 and one after beating Kenton and Brian this past weekend. Let's go to the MAC now. It's Versailles yep. off to a very strong start there. 5-0, and oh, they beat New Knoxville pretty easily, and they've scored 78 81 and 80 yeah. in their last three games. That's high, high output. Well, you can look at the offensive side because that's the side that you like, and we all like <laughs> the games to go up and down. Yeah. But if you look at it, they've also given up 38, 23, and 47. So yeah. it's not just a one end where they're playing, you know, run and shoot it and forgetting about the defensive end as well. And you know, if you look at their schedule, they've got uh, at Parkway this weekend, then they've got Urbana before they have the tournament that they host over the Christmas vacation. So they well could be on a good winning, winning streak going into January. Court recovery opened the season, coming off their state football title at Shawnee on Saturday. Got a win. Minster, one and one. They opened Friday night, beat right. St. Henry in the opener, but then lost to Wapak Saturday. Yeah, I, I'm really curious what Mike Lee is going to do down at Minster. I thought that was a nice win over St. Henry to get things started. Um, you know, they had seven players score between four and 15 points. Really good balance. I talked to some Minster people, and I know we need to get the rosters and check and see how accurate this is. But there were 17 Minster players who played football who were either on the freshman, JV, or varsity basketball team. And I still saw them play very well against Upper Soda, uh, Upper Soda Valley in a scrimmage. So I think Mike Lee's got a really nice program there, and, and things are going well for him. We'll see how things go through the rest of the season. Yeah, I kind of wrote down we're incomplete on the MAC right now because yeah, we're right. still waiting for Marion Local right. and Coldwater, which they should open up this week. Right. I think one of them opens up Tuesday and then the other on Friday. And just to close out the MAC as well, New Bremen 41-40 over Parkway. That's a good yeah. win for the Cardinals in a tight yeah. game. Their first win is certainly one that they needed. If we want to go back and finish up on the football schools, Fort Recovery got a win over Shawnee on Saturday night. That was 64-49. Sheffer had 20. Cox had 18. They had eight players score for them, so a good start for Fort Recovery. Yeah, they were too. impressive. I yeah. was impressed with what I saw out of the Purple Indians. We, had, we also had a lot of Wildcats for Wildcats, Indians versus Indians, yeah. so poor recovery looked good early on. Moving to the NWCC, Perry, 5-0, and oh, wins over USV, and Ada Matt Tabler got his 100th career victory. Yeah, congratulations coach. to Matt. Done a really nice job with their program there. What I liked about them is that we talk about scoring. Let's go to that side of the game for them. In every game, they have scored more points than the previous game. They've been 41, 67, 69, 72, 74. So they keep putting points on the board. A nice win over USV by 10 the other night. Of course, Hart, Lane Harvey and Gardner leading them in scoring. They're averaging about 34 points a game between the two of them. Those two guys. Then you got Monford. you got some other guys who can score as well. So Perry's off to a good start. Now that's a tough trend to keep up unless you're going to score oh, yeah, 150 yeah, right. points <laughs> by, by February. Yeah, let's but. see when. I'm sure Coach Tabor hopes they keep that string yeah. going. But that's right. That's a, good, that's a good trend to keep up. Riverside over Temple by yep. 20. And then the Pioneers beat Corey Ross on Saturday, bouncing back. And Ridgemont over Waynesfield Goshen. The Golden Gophers lost to Bakken Saturday. The Tigers lost to Triad on Saturday. So it really feels like it's Perry's league to lose, even though it's early. 
they seem like the cream of the crop. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that they're on top. Riverside this week plays Temple, or Riverside beat Temple, 72-52. Riverside's got a lot of athletes. It'll be interesting to see if they can keep up with the way that Perry likes to play. But uh, that's, that's certainly Perry's off to a great start right now. All right, moving right along, Mark, let's go to the track. Lima Senior is 1-0, and this game took place last Tuesday that we're about right. to talk about. We were previewing it when we were taping last week's. A huge comfort behind win over St. John's and a real statement victory in game number one for Lima Senior. In many, many ways, Matt, because first of all, it was their first game of the season. Uh, second, it was on the road to a very good St. John's team. Third, uh, they're behind by 13 in the third quarter. They make a great run. Obviously, Xavier Simpson with his 26. Jar Ward had 13, made some threes late. And then, of course, a one-point win. That was a huge win for them. Unfortunately, they couldn't follow it up with a Friday or Saturday game because Toledo Central Catholic, who their opponent was, was off in the football playoffs and didn't play that weekend. So they're going to play tonight, Tuesday night, against Fremont Ross on the road before their big home tournament this weekend uh, with the two schools coming in from their pretty good teams. And we will, yeah, we will have coverage of that tournament or, I guess, just get-to-get. It's, get it's not really not, officially not a, a tournament, tournament anymore. anymore yeah. But Lima Senior will have two interesting games. Coming up, and we'll have coverage on WOSN of both well, of those. One of them, East Hazelwood, Missouri, is coming in. And for Spartan fans, they're coached by Londale Thomas, who played for them back uh, many years ago and one of the very successful teams that they had. And so it'll be interesting to see what Coach Thomas brings in with his program. Oh, that's a nice connection. Yep. And Finley in the track, 4-0, beating Fremont Ross. And then the Bath mentioned that Bath victory in double overtime. So Trojans looking good as well. They are, 4-0, off to a good start. Coons averaging 16, Elbin about 12 and a half points per game. They've had five different players make three-point field goals for them. Of course, with Coach Rookie, it starts with defense and then half-court offensive execution. They've been able to do both. Again, the Bath Wildcats missed some free throws late. That allowed Finley to hang in the basketball game, and they win in double overtime. Uh, they have St. Francis at home this week. That's an interesting concept as well. All right, we got a couple more leagues to break down, so let's move to the BBC as we continue our rapid pace here, <laughs> yeah. trying to get as many teams in as we can. Right. Van Buren 2-0 wins over Arcadia and Elmwood, and Macomb 1-0 after opening the season against Hopewell Loudon. What team are you most focused on in this league? Well, let's start with Van Buren since they've got a little bit more uh, data to, to look at with them. Four players averaging double figures, Fasone, Turner, Stevenson, and Brandt. They all average in double figures. They score a lot of points. They've got an interesting matchup this week because they have Arlington at home. And you go, yeah, but Arlington's 3-3. Three and three. They're 1-1. One one. But Jason Vermilion's team always plays solid defense. They give up about 45 points per game this year defensively. It will be a challenge to see if, if Van Buren can continue that scoring pace when they match up with Arlington this weekend. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Liberty Benton got a league win over North they Baltimore. They should, they should be good again. They should. Uh, I think I've seen them play against OG. They've got some size inside with, with Kraft, and they've got Master, Master Lasco at guard. So they're very good there. May's a good three-point shooter from the perimeter. They've got some good things going there. We should go back and finish up with Macomb because they did have a good start beating Hopewell Loudon by 20. Uh, they've got Van Lu on Friday. They go to Continental on Saturday. So a couple chances to pick up wins for them as well. All right, let's close with the Shelby County League and Jackson Center unbeaten. Yep. They beat Botkins, and, you know, they, they already started league play a couple weeks ago. We were talking about that. Right. So they've had some big games. We know they play each other twice. Rushi beat Fort Lormy. And then the Indians rebounded with a win over New Bremen on Saturday. But this league isn't quite playing out like I thought it might early on. Well, what's looked like is Jackson Center appears to be the cream of the crop right now, and everybody's chasing them because they're all starting to knock each other off. I had a chance to see Anna on Saturday night at a non-league conference game with New Bremen. Um, New Knoxville. No, sorry, yes, New Knoxville, wrong new. <laughs> yeah. But you're right, with New Knoxville. And, yeah, they played well that night. They, they won by 11, but it seemed like more than that throughout the course of the game. It kind of got down to 11 at the end. So I think Anna's going to be okay before it's all over. But right now we're talking about Jackson Center and how well the Tigers are playing. All right, we'll see if they can keep that going now. We're going to be off again till the new year, so right. we've got a lot of games to look forward to. I'm just going to keep it for this weekend. <laughs> All right. Tell me which games you're looking forward to this weekend. Well, I, we've already kind of gone through a few of them a little bit. Obviously, the spencerville Paulding game is a huge game in that particular conference, but once again, every week we're going to find a big game in that particular conference to look at. The other thing is I want to see how Lima Senior plays, and I don't know much about this East Hazleton team that Londell Thomas is bringing in from Missouri, that's their Friday night game, but their Saturday opponents, Dayton Dunbar, and we know Dunbar is always a talented team. They look forward to being in or near the state tournament every year. I think that'll be a huge test for the Spartans. Looking forward to both of their games this weekend. A couple of good matchups on Saturday, too. Maybe Wapak LCC, right. OG Collida, and then one league game that uh, you didn't mention there. I'm looking forward to Perry Riverside. And then, as I mentioned before, Coldwater against Delphi St. John's and Marion Local versus Minster, both opening up the season. 
I guess, this Friday with, with League Games. Yeah, we're just looking to see what they can put out on the floor, what type of their product is, and how they have adapted from their very good fix of football success and then putting it into transition onto the basketball floor. All right, let's run through our rebroadcast schedule and see what you can watch when and where. Wednesday at 8 p.m., Ottoville versus Delphus Jefferson boys from the stage in Delphus. Then Friday, 8 p.m., Little Girl Saxon, Salina versus Bath. That 43 game winning streak in the WBL for the Wildkins was snapped last week to OG, as we talked about. So that should be an interesting to see how interesting one to see if Bath can bounce back against Salina in the league. Friday at 10:30 on. WOSN. It's Liberty Benton versus Corey Ross and boys Friday at 1044. Following the sports report on WTLW, I'm a senior versus East Hazelwood. That should be an interesting one. Saturday, bunch of games for you. 7 p.m. versus Sales versus Parkway boys. 830 St. Mary's versus Shawnee. Then Saturday, 1030, Wapakoneta versus LCC. Saturday, 1030 on WTLW, Lima Senior, Dayton, Dunbar. And then we close with one game for you on Sunday. Miller City versus Wayne Trace boys. We'll also have some wrestling for you on Sunday from the Allen County meet. So lots to look forward to, and Mark, the next time I see you, we will have so much to catch up on because two weeks will have passed and all this basketball will have been played. And the next time we see each other, it will be 2.016. Oh, man. Things have flown by in Pretty 2015. Crazy. Well, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you. And thank you for watching this edition of Mark's Madness.